Hi, and welcome back to the Cozy Sound channel and part six in the series all about my DIY modular analog synth, the Project 12 synth. In this episode, I'm going to be looking at VAT rolls and a low pass gate, which is kind of a an ad adaptation of a, a VAT roll, a different different way of using them. Now, I've done VAT rolls to death. Um, well, not quite to death, but I've visited VAT rolls before. Um, links will appear for some of the videos I've done, which will have a lot more detail than I'm going to go through today on this one. Um, in very brief terms, a Vactrol uses a light-dependent resistor to control um, the signal passing through it. Um, the resistance of the light-dependent resistor, the LDR, is inversely proportional to the amount of light falling on it. So what we do, we use an LED, and the more voltage you put in the LED, the brighter it is, the lower re the, the resistance is on the LDR, the more signal passes through which in analog synth terms means the bigger the control voltage the bigger the output from the Vactron so you can use it to control the level of the signal and hence it operates like a voltage controlled amplifier VCA um, the low pass gate that also uses a Vactron and indeed the version I've got here is the one that's taken from Analog Lab Swiss uh, Instagram account. He puts up some great, really simple uh, schematics that are dead easy to follow. I'll put the link down in the description for that. But for now, here is my interpretation on a strip board layout. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Um, very few components. The difference between this and a standard Vactrol is that in standard Vactrols we tend to use bright white LEDs. In this one, the Vactrol bit has actually got a red LED in it and then there's a green LED also on the circuit. Um, the effect is that with the extra components you get a kind of a, a low pass filter type effect as well as the VCA type effect. We'll have a look at that in more detail. Um, I'm not going to kind of strip it down and show you all the circuits and everything. You've you've got the schematic. If you go to the Instagram account, you've got the schematic. You've got my strip board layout. So let's get down to the nitty gritty and get on and hear what they actually sound like and how you use them in a modular analog synth setup. Start by looking at the patch I've got set up on the synth here. Um, the oscillator is one of my dual VCOs. I'll probably switch the second one in later. Um, I'll, I'll, you'll see why in a moment. Um, and the oscillator, um, there's a CV signal coming from the, the beat step. I've programmed a, a little very simple sequence into it just for the demonstration purposes. In this first uh, setup, the output from the VCO goes into one of the Vactrols. Well, look, looking at the controls on the Vactrol, we have an input, which is where the VCO is going. We have an output, and that is just simply going out to the mixer to be recorded. There's also an input for the CV, the control voltage, and in addition on this to the other Vactrols that I've used in the past is there is a CV level control. Now this circuit is taken from the Modular in a Week series. Um, the link for that is down in the description. Um, it's pretty much the same as, as the other Vactrols I've put together. The only real difference being that there is this potentiometer on the uh, CV input which as you can see allows you to adjust the, the uh, CV level which can be useful particularly when you've got a, a system that ha doesn't have a, a a consistent voltage across all of the modules I mean these, these are all DIY modules from all over the place that um, will chuck out a, a whole range of different voltage levels 
Um, although what I am doing with the CV and the um, the trigger is the trigger is going through uh, a buffered gate to try and kind of give me more more of a robust known voltage level and likewise the CV is going through a buffered multi or a buffered patch as I've called it on my system here. Um, so essentially what we've what we've got this is the Vactrol um, we're going to run a sequence on it the Vactrol is being triggered directly from the beat step sequencer and the CV is coming direct from the beat step and um, the output is going through the Vactrol so one of the things you will notice is that already compared to when we looked at the um, the dual VCA, which is a very simple 13700 uh, chip uh, design, I couldn't get it to switch off completely. I, there was always kind of some signal coming through. What you'll notice is that I've got nothing running at the moment, but everything is switched on and there is zero signal. Because there is, there is no voltage going into the LED in the Vactrol, the resistance across the LDR, the light dependent resistor, is very high and it's, it's high enough to block the signal. So we're getting zero output. Okay, let's start the sequence running and you, you can hear what it does. Now oh, well, the LED there is, is responding to the, uh, the CV input. So the CV input is literally the gate pulse coming out of the beat step. As I said, I can I can alter the level of the CV, which will appear to have a great deal of effect. But you can get some interesting stuff going on if you turn it kind of quite low. So very very basic. That is that is literally the if you start and add some more steps in. And you can hear it's got a it's got a reasonably quick response. Having said that, the interesting thing when I was doing the research on uh, on things like vitrols and VCAs, um, I'll stop that a second. One one of the things I found out was is this East Coast West Coast synth thing. Um, I'm about to demonstrate what happens when you plug a an envelope in there. Um, so what I'm going to do. Let's do this, and I'll, I'll talk about this while I'm doing it. So, take the trigger signal from the beat step into the envelope, and the CV from the envelope back into the CV and the Vactrol. Now, what I was saying is that, that the East Coast, West Coast, on the East Coast, they were building voltage-controlled amplifiers, um, which have a, a, a quite a, a rapid response. Whereas the thing with the Vactrol, because you're kind of having to light an LED and then get a response from um, the, the light dependent resistor, there's a, a slower response time than your actual kind of um, solid, you know, the, the, the voltage controlled amplifier, the true amplifier. Um, so what we're finding was that although on the East Coast they could put together an ADSR envelope, on the West Coast, because of the restrictions in the response time on the Vactrols that they were using, they couldn't get all four stages of an ADSR in a short period of time. So they tended to favour a two-stage envelope, which is pretty much what I've got here. I'm, I'm using an attack release envelope on this. Um, and we're going into a West Coast Vact Vactrol, <laughs> if you like. So let's, let's, but I've got, on the envelope, we've got attack and release set to minimum so so you can hear now that we've got this very sharp spiky um, CV signal going into the Vactrol if I just adjust the attack rate so there's a bit more of a slow on the attack If you take it too slow, it, it, it kind of confuses itself with the steps. 
and you get like a, a double effect. What it is, is that the slew rate on the envelope um, is too slow for the actual um, step rate on the sequencer. Put that back down to minimum. Let me turn up the release. And turn it a little bit of a tight. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same. What I've just done here, I'm going to do the same thing on the LPG, the low pass gate, which, like I say, as you've seen from the the circuit, is is a is a variation on on the back troll theme. If I leave the release on and just hit the end. I should have heard this a bit more. Put a bit more on. There you go. You can hear it die away. Um, what you're going to get is is you're going to get a little bit of uh, filtering. There's a low pass filter on it. So let's start this going again. No, let's stop that. I'll tell you what. Let's let's take the envelope out. Let's go back to just triggering it from the beat step. Right, what I can do now is introduce, it's a dual VCO, so I can introduce a, a higher pitch oscillator and have both of them going. So there you go, you've, you've got, you've got a, a lower pitch and a higher pitch oscillator going. And you can hear kind of what it sounds like and, and the brightness coming from the standard Vitrol. Right, okay, so I'm going to take the CV and into low pass gate. Low pass gate it has a CV input which you've just seen. There's an LED which indicates what the CV is doing. I don't have a, a CV control on this one so there's there's no knob to adjust the CV control so this is kind of a still quite a basic one. Take the output from the dual VCO and put that into the input on the low pass gate. Take the output and put it into the output on the low pass gate and I start the sequence again now remember what you just heard coming through the back troll and you can hear that it's kind of this it's lost some of the fizz lost some of the top end it, it is a a little bit more muted that is the the low pass filter effect that you're getting with a a low pass gate design of of back troll But you can hear, and, and this also, there's a, there's a little, I don't know whether you can hear it clearly on this, but there's, there's a, a little bit more kind of slew in the in the response. It's a, it, it, it sounds a little bit slower response, not quite as crisp and as sharp on, on the attack. Okay, let's, so let's now do what we did with the back trolls, and we'll take the CV out from the envelope, and trigger the envelope from the beat step and once again I've got minimum attack and minimum release and again it, it's kind of it's, it's lost some of that fizz that we had at the top end when we when we had it just through the vibe troll but you're still getting a nice sharp response. So there I've increased the uh, the attack. You can hear here it, it does. The low pass gates tend to have kind of a more of a uh, a slower rise on on the attack naturally. So as you as you slow down the attack on the envelope, it kind of it, it seems to be more more enhanced, more more obvious. Take that back down, bring up the release. And the fall off from the the, the low pass filter end of it. Again, it kind of smooths things out. It's it's when I, when I brought up the, the release.
So it's a little bit more mellow, a little bit kind of more of a, a laid-back response than, than your, your standard Vactrol, which can, can be useful, you know, you can kind of, kind of, kind of a bit more of a, less of a fizz and more of a, a muted, more kind of relaxed effect on it. So turning up what I'm doing here, I'm in, in, I've put the attack down to minimum and I've turned up, up the release. And you should hear, when I stop the sequencer now, you should hear uh, the kind of the, the filter effect as, as the signal dies away. Yeah, maybe. So, there you go. And once again, with no signal going through, you're not getting a, a kind of a, a leak through because once again, because you're using the LDR, the light dependent resistor, and, and a, and a um, LED to drive it, with no light coming from the LED, the resistance across the LDR is high enough to completely block the signal from the VCO. So you can get it to drop back to complete silence, which, as I said, <laughs> if you watch the previous episode in this series, I couldn't couldn't get the um, 13700 VCA to actually do that. Um, in fact, I got quite a lot of bleed through when even when the sequencer wasn't running and there was no CV signal going in. Um, so there you go. Once again, my old friend the VAC trolls and and performing reasonably well. In fact, performing very well in the analog modular DIY synth. And, and again, I love these things. I keep saying it, but yeah, they are really, really useful. The other thing I'll mention as well is that both the Vactrols and the LPG are passive circuits. They don't require a power supply. All they are doing is manipulating the signals that are passing through them. They don't need to have their own power supply to do that. They are completely passive. And they are very, very simple and very easy to build. You, I've, I've given you lots of information on this with this video and previous videos. So yeah, go on, have a go, build your own. Mm -hmm.